Hello everyone and welcome to Living Hope Church Online brought to you by Living Hope Church Broadcast Media. I am your host, Pastor Dr. Kemi Atanda Hillary, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. I'm grateful to God that I have this wonderful opportunity to bring to us this new series that we are starting in the month of March 2022. The series is based on the scripture for March 2022 for us in Living Oak Church. Psalms 55 verse 22. Psalms 55 verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. And the theme of this series is simply cast your burden on the Lord. Amen. Firstly, let me say that I'm really grateful to God that what I've read to you is my experience all through my life. That if you cast your cares upon the Lord, the Lord will sustain you. He will not permit you to be moved. In all the situations that I've faced in life, I can genuinely tell you that once I was young, now I am old, I have never seen the Lord fail. Shortly, by the grace of God, I will be 63 years old. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm grateful to God that He has taught me how to cast my cares upon him, how to cast my burden upon the Lord, and he has always sustained me. He has never permitted me to be moved. So really, I want to share something that is important to me in life with you, and I'm sure it's going to be a great benefit to you too. Amen. So, Starting from today, the 6th of March, 2022, and throughout all the other Sundays, we shall be focusing on Cast Your Burden Upon the Lord. Amen. Today, the topic will be Dealing with Our Burdens with Knowledge. Dealing with Our Burdens with Knowledge. Please come with me. When you look at Psalms 55 verse 22, you find that the Lord is asking us to do something that is quite straightforward. But often it is easier said than done. So I know how difficult it is for many of us to actually cast our burdens upon the Lord. And that's why today I want to focus on dealing with our burdens with knowledge. God wants us to put our burdens down. God wants us to put our burdens and anxieties and worries down and walk away free because Jesus has paid the price for our freedom. So you might ask me the question, what is a burden? Usually, a burden is a problem that we face that we desperately want to solve. A burden is a problem that we face and we desperately want it to be solved. Where do burdens come from? Where do problems come from? In Job chapter 5, verses 6 to 7, the Bible tells us, For affliction does not come from the dust, nor does trouble spring from the ground. Yet man is born to trouble, as the sparks fly upward. Man is born to trouble, as the sparks fly upward. So point number one, we are born with burdens. We are born with problems. 
that is just the nature of life that is the reality of life everyone rich or poor strong or sick we are born with burdens the so-called accident of birth the circumstances of our birth and upbringing will load us with a number of problems that are unique to each one of us. Point number two. We often have burdens imposed upon us by the circumstances of our location and relationships. We often have problems imposed upon us by the circumstances of our location and relationships. Where we live, where we work, even where we worship, and then of course all the various networks of friendship, of family, all those networks. We have burdens imposed upon us by the circumstances of our location and our relationships. Point number three, when we are asking ourselves, where do burdens or problems come from? We often create burdens for ourselves too. We create burdens for ourselves through our conduct or misconduct and through the conduct or misconduct of others. That's how burdens come. If somebody says, oh, I'm a man of God, I've got no problems, don't believe them. It's so untrue. They are trying to deceive you. If somebody says, I am a woman of God, I've got no problems, don't believe them. They are fibbing. They are telling you lies. Of course, it is possible for somebody to say, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. But actually, the point is, the person is poor <laughs> and the person is weak. Okay? So what we are saying now is this. Even though it might be called comfort, everyone has problems, the rich and the poor, the strong and the sick, everyone has problems. And now we've discovered where our problems come from. Remember that today on this broadcast, we are on this series titled Cast your cares upon God. Cast your burdens upon God. And today we are looking at the knowledge for dealing with our burdens. The knowledge for dealing with our problems. So, when God asks us in Psalms 55 verse 22 to cast our burdens upon the Lord because he will sustain us, it will not permit us to be moved, to be disgraced, to be ashamed. How do we do that? How do we cast our burdens upon the Lord? I'm sure many of us, we know the answer. The answer is straightforward. Firstly, we should pray about all our problems. Prayer is the only effective way of casting our care on Jesus. We should definitely pray about all our troubles, all our burdens, all our problems. We should ask the Lord for wisdom to deal with our problems. We should have this implicit trust in God having prayed that God will find a way to deal with the problems for us. Often, things don't change immediately. 
sometimes things even get worse but if you know what the Lord is saying to us today and you've put it into practice you will agree with me that when you pray sincerely from your heart about any problem you are willing to trust God to prevail in that situation and whatever outcome that you get you are willing to say to the Lord I am grateful because I know you will only give me the best may we all learn how to pray the prayer of faith that includes trusting God that whatever answer he gives is the best may God's will be done always in our circumstances amen now when we have prayed often God will give us the understanding of what to do next amen God will give us the understanding of what to do next so guess what when we have prayed let's keep our mind open let's do the things that will make God happy with us in the circumstances that we face whatever we do let it be something that will please God from our heart to his heart Amen May God grant us wisdom Let's ask for the will of God to prevail in all our circumstances. Let's trust God to accomplish his purpose in our life, no matter the problems we face. Amen. Let me give us three examples from scripture. The first one that I want to give us is in Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 17. Genesis 28, verses 10 to 17. Here we meet a young man called Jacob. He was running away from home because he had done something wrong. He had cheated his brother, and his brother was threatening to kill him. His brother Esau was threatening to kill him. His father, Isaac, and his mother, Rebekah, in order to prevent that kind of tragic thing happening in the family, they decided to send Jacob away to Jacob's maternal uncle, maternal uncle, Laban. So Jacob was running away, but he was weighed down by his guilt. He was weighed down by his burden. He came to a place where he fell asleep. He had a stone for a pillow. He fell asleep under open skies. Thank God for his gracious goodness. God gave him a vision. Jacob saw a ladder reaching from the earth to the sky to the heaven and from the heaven to the earth and God was standing on top and God reminded Jacob of the promise that God had given to Jacob's grandfather, Abraham. And God said to Jacob, I am with you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will give you this land, you and your descendants. The whole world will be blessed because you are blessed. When Jacob woke up, Jacob said something that we must pay attention to. Jacob said, wow, this is the gate of heaven and I did not know it. Most of the time, when we are faced with burdens, when we carry our burdens on our back, we often forget the promises of God. So Jacob was weighed down with the problems that he was carrying. And therefore, he forgot the promises of God. But God, being gracious, 
reminded Jacob of his promises. May God do the same thing for each one of us. There is no problem that is bigger than the promises of God for each one of us. May God allow us to hear the reassuring and comforting word of God to us, especially if we are born again by the Spirit of God through Christ Jesus. We have a relationship, a dynamic relationship, a living relationship with God as our Father, our Protector, our Provider, our Forgiver, our Restorer. Let me give us another example from Scripture. This time I'm going to Genesis chapter 37, verses 23 to 36. Genesis 37, verses 23 to 36. Here we meet another young man named Joseph. God had given Joseph a vision about how God would bless him, bless him so much that his brothers and his parents would be so blessed as well because Joseph is blessed. Now you know the story. His brothers hated him and they hated him particularly because God had given him a vision for his future. And so in this particular section of scripture, in Genesis chapter 37, verses 23 to 36, Joseph was sent by his father to go and check the welfare of his brothers, his 11 brothers. As soon as they saw him, they said, See, the, dream, the dreamer is coming. Let us kill him, and we will see how his dreams will come to pass. Listen very carefully. They caught Joseph. They threw him into a pit. For God had planned that that pit would not have any water. So, even though they threw me into a very dark pit, Jacob was still, I mean, Joseph was still alive. Eventually, they decided to sell him into slavery. And they sold him into slavery. They stripped him of the tunic that his father had given him the tunic of many colors. They dipped that tunic in the blood of an animal. They then took the tunic to Jacob, the father, and they said, look, is this the tunic of your son Joseph? When Jacob saw it, Jacob said, my son Joseph had been killed by a wild animal. And he began to mourn. And he said, I would mourn for the rest of my life. Joseph had his own problems. Jacob had his own problems. And the people who had caused them problems, they even had their own problems, you know. But see how God works out everything. That's why it's very good for us to learn how to cast our burdens on the Lord. Why? In the background, God is working something out that will astonish us. Even if it looks unsolved today, even if it looks unsolvable today, in the background, when we've cast our burdens upon the Lord, God is working out something that will astonish us, something that will lead us to praise him forevermore. Amen. Cast your burdens on the Lord. He shall sustain you. He will not permit you to be moved. Amen. What about a third example in 1 Samuel chapter 21 verses 1 to 15? 1 Samuel chapter 21 verses 1 to 15. Here we find David running away from Saul. Saul had become his enemy, even though David did something good. The conduct of David was very good. David helped Saul, the first king of Israel. David was kind. 
David risked his life in defending the kingdom of Israel on behalf of Saul. His good conduct brought him problems. Amen. So now he has to run away from Saul because Saul was going to kill him unless he runs away. And guess where he had to run to? He ran to the Philistines. He ran into the kingdom of the Philistines. One of the kings called Achish. That's where David ended up. But as soon as the people of Achish saw David, they said, is this not the person that everybody in Israel was praising for killing the Philistines? <laughs> so David knew that he was in trouble. So he pretended to be insane, to be mad. He began to scratch the wall and he drooped saliva on his bed. God gave him the wisdom to understand how to handle his problem. You know the end of the story. He escaped from Achish. He wasn't killed by the Philistines. So again, listen carefully. When we cast our burden upon the Lord, the Lord is more than able to grant us wisdom how to handle our problems. God is more than able to do it. In that same story, David first ran to Nob and he met the priests of Nob and he asked for bread. And they said, this was holy bread. You can't have it unless you and your men, you have not had sexual relationship. So David said, yes, we haven't had sexual relationship. Please give us the bread. And when he was going to go, when he was going to leave, he said, can I also have a sword? Because he had no sword to defend himself. And the priest of Nob said, here is the sword of Goliath. And David said, that's a good sword. Let me have it. What is that to tell us? Wisdom. He had a problem. But he did not allow the religious mentality of the day to frustrate him. Relationship with God is more than important. It's more important than any religious notion. He needed bread. The priest said, it's a holy bread. And David said, don't worry about it. I am a holy person. Just give me the bread. May God grant you wisdom and shrewdness so that you don't allow religion to be your bondage, to be a manacle, a chain, holding you down when you should go forward. May God grant you wisdom. Because a lot of people, they become so religious and because they are so religious, they do silly things. They don't move forward in life. Look at the other thing that David did. He asked for a sword to defend himself. When you have a problem and you commit it to the Lord, God is more than able to give you the wisdom to do the right thing before God. Remember what we are saying today. Cast your burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain you. He will not permit you to be moved. Amen. And then you come to Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, Jesus was encouraging all of us not to worry. Do not worry about what you will eat, what you will wear. Sufficient every day is the problem of the day. Look at how God clothes the lilies and the flowers. They are here today. They are burnt up in the oven tomorrow. If God can do that for birds and for lilies and so on, how much more for each one of us? So do not worry. There is no way that your worry can make you live longer. Neither can your worry 
actually solve the problem. So whatever the situation is, guess what? We must learn how to do what? How to cast our burden on the Lord. And He will sustain us. He will not permit us to be moved. Amen. God is good. All the time is just so good. And the only effective way of casting our burden upon the Lord is by taking everything to God in prayer and having prayed to do whatever is right in the sight of God. Amen. God is good. Let me read something to us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. That's Jesus calling each one of us to come to him. Amen. God is just so gracious. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit help each one of us to cast our burden upon him for he cares for us. Amen. Let's go on then. We know what to do now. But I want to share a few things further with us. There are certain things that we need to know about problems in life. There are certain things that we need to know about problems in life. Point number one, not every problem needs fixing. Not every problem needs fixing. Sometimes it's enough to simply let a problem exist. We need to learn to be okay with unresolved problems. When you are desperate to fix a problem that does not need fixing, you can create more problems. May God give you the knowledge to identify the problems that do not need fixing. Amen. Amen. Let me read us a story from Scripture. Matthew chapter 13, from verse 24 to verse 30. This is a parable that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 13, from verse 24 to 30. The parable of the wheat and the tares. Another parable Jesus put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your land, in your field? How then does it have tears? So he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. That parable teaches us a lot. There might be problems that you think you must solve today, that you think it needs to be dealt with right now. 
But when you pray to God, God might just show you a different perspective. Let sleeping dogs lie. Leave the problem alone. Leave the problem alone. There are problems that do not need fixing. You just need to accept that whilst they are there, you are okay. So don't be too troubled about ongoing problems. Don't be too troubled about unresolved problems. Don't be too troubled about unresolvable problems. Remember, certain problems, they don't need fixing right now or even in the long term. Be okay with types of problems that they, that they don't need to be fixed. Amen. Amen. You can put your bodies down and walk away free when you accept not every problem needs fixing, either immediately or even in the long term. Point number two. Every problem that does not stop our blessing now or in the future does not need fixing. Remember, the Lord is giving us knowledge about how to handle our burdens, how to handle our problems. Every problem that does not stop our blessing now or in the future does not need fixing. See in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. But God said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. What Paul the Apostle was saying to us, is that certain problems, they don't really hinder our blessing at all. They don't stop us from being blessed now or in the future. We should learn to live with those problems and give thanks to God. Amen. Psalm 110 verse 2, Psalm 110 verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Amen. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. You need to learn how to rule in the midst of your enemies. Sometimes we want all our enemies to be dealt with, to be removed. But sometimes God wants us to simply rule in the midst of our enemies. Learn to be okay with unresolved problems that don't hinder your blessing now or in the future. Amen. Psalms 23 verse 5. Psalms 23 verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. God prepares a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. They can't bless me. They can't stop me from being blessed. I don't need to worry about them. I need to learn how to be okay with certain problems that don't end my blessing now or in the future. Amen. May God grant you peace, no matter what you face. May you come to a place where you know that there are certain problems that you are okay with because they don't stop you from being blessed now or in the future. Amen. 
Enjoy your blessing. Ignore the problem. There are problems you just have to ignore because they don't stop you from being blessed. Amen. Point number three, very quickly. Not every problem is our problem. Not every problem is your problem. It's easy to make someone else's problems yours out of ignorance or the misguided opinion that you exist to solve the problems of everyone that you know. That has happened to me before. But now you need to know that not every problem is your problem. Don't make people's problems your problems out of ignorance or the misguided opinion that you exist to solve the problems of everyone that you know. Remember, God didn't say people should cast their problems on you. <laughs> Always remember that. God has never said in the scriptures that people should cast their problems on you. God says everyone should cast their burdens on him and he will sustain them. He will not permit them to be moved. So try and help everyone, but don't feel guilty if you don't have the means to help anyone. Amen. Try and help everyone, but never feel guilty if you don't have the means or the resources to help anyone. Amen. Let's read Galatians chapter 6, verses 2 to 5. Galatians 6, verses 2 to 5. This is how it reads. Galatians chapter 6, verses 2 to 5. Bear one another's burdens, and you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Okay? May God give you the wisdom, the knowledge, to be able to say to people from time to time, you should learn to bear your own load. You should learn how to stand on your own two feet. God has created each one of us to learn how to stand on our own two feet. So, yes, try and help everyone, but don't feel guilty and don't think that everybody must cast their burden upon you. No, everybody must bear their own load. Amen. In the same place, Galatians 6, to read verse 17. This is what Paul the Apostle says. From now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. From now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. So there must come a time when you should be able to know that a particular problem from a particular person is actually not your problem. It's their load to bear. Amen. And you can say, I've helped you enough. Now you must help yourself. Amen. God is good all the time. So yes, we must be our brother's keeper. But let's do it generously. Let's do it wisely as well. Okay? Let's do it generously, but let's do it wisely as well. Remember the parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. They went to meet the bridegroom. The wise virgins, they had extra oil. Just in case the bridegroom was late, they would put the extra oil in their lamps. 
the foolish virgins, they didn't take extra oil with them. So suddenly, their lamps went off and they turned to the wise virgins. So let's go and read it in Matthew chapter 25, verses 7 to 9. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Amen. May God grant you knowledge of how to actually say no to frivolous requests for help. You must learn to say no to frivolous requests for help. Amen. Amen. Okay. Point number four. Not every problem requires your personal intervention. Not every problem requires your personal intervention. Sometimes God puts you there to see or hear about a person's problem so you can direct them to where you know they can get the help they need. Amen. So sometimes God brings somebody into your life. They share their problems with you so that you can hear about it, you can see the problems, and then you can direct them to where their help can come from. So point number four, not every problem requires your personal intervention. Second Kings chapter 5 verses 1 to 3. Second Kings chapter 5 verses 1 to 3. Here is a story that is very instructive for us to learn from. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids, and they had brought back captive, a young girl from the land of Israel. This young girl waited on Naaman's wife. Then this young girl said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. You know the rest of the story. Naaman listened to the advice of the captive girl and went to Israel, went to Samaria. And through the mighty grace of God, the Lord, through Elisha, said to him, Go and dip yourself into the river Jordan seven times and your leprosy will be healed. Naaman did that and his leprosy was healed. The fact is, the captive girl could never heal Naaman, but God had put her there so that she could give advice as to where Naaman could find help. Not everybody's problem requires your intervention. Amen. Amen. Point number five, because time is going. Time is pressing on us rapidly. Point number five. Remember today on this series about casting your burdens upon the Lord. This first installment is titled Knowledge to Handle Our Problems. Knowledge to Handle the Burdens of Life. Okay? So that's the title for this first installment. And this is point number five in terms of the knowledge to handle our problems. A problem that you did not cause and is outside of your control is never your problem. Amen. 
a problem that you did not cause and is outside of your control is never your problem. Let's read a story in 2 Samuel chapter 6 verses 2 to 7. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verses 2 to 7. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, whose name is called by the name the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. So they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. Then David and all the house of Israel played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments of far wood, on harps, on stringed instruments, on tambourines, on sistrums, and on cymbals. Verse 6. And when they came to Nachon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of God. Now, we must feel sorry for Uzzah. He was trying to do something good. But listen, the oxen stumbled. Leave that alone. Don't do anything. Because you have heard again and again, you are not to touch the ark, Uzzah. And God is more than able to protect his own ark. So you can see how the problem that Uzzah did not cause, the problem that was outside his control, became his problem to his tragedy, to his detriment. That's why I'm saying to us in this fifth point, the problem that you did not cause and is outside of your control, you should know that it is not your problem. Amen. Have your peace. Trust God to solve such a problem. Amen. A problem that you did not cause and is outside of your control is never your problem. Okay, let's come to the final point. Point number six, where we are going to finish today. Finally, learn not to create problems for yourself or for others. Learn not to create problems for yourself or for others. Don't make a mountain out of a mole eel. Don't create a storm in a teacup. When you face a problem, ask God for the right perspective. Sometimes a problem that you think is huge, when God gives you the right perspective, is a very small problem. Amen. And be careful not to create problems for yourself or for others. May God grant you the right perspective in every situation, in every circumstance. May God grant you perseverance, patience, endurance, resilience. You need to know how to avoid creating problems for yourself and for others. That's one of the important aspects of knowledge that we must acquire even as we grow and mature in our relationship with God and in the relationship that we have with other people, whether in our family or in our community or in our workplaces, 
we need to begin to learn how not to create problems for others. How not to create problems for ourselves. Amen. Amen. May God teach us not to make a mountain out of a mole hill. May God teach us not to create a storm in a teacup. May God give us the kind of perspective that enables us to deal with problems in a wise way. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. Philippians 2, verses 14 to 16. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God, without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain, as much as within your power, within your grace, do all things without complaining and disputing. Amen. May God in his mercy help us not to create problems for ourselves and not to create problems for others. Let's finish. You know how we started. The key scripture for this series on cast your burdens upon the Lord is found in Psalms 55 verse 22 and it reads as follows. Cast your burdens upon God. He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. And God has been teaching us the most effective way, the only effective way to cast our burdens on the Lord is by praying and focusing on the things that please God. Taking the right steps making the right decisions in relation to our problems. Amen. God is there for each one of us. Psalms 81, verses 6 to 7. Psalms 81, verses 6 to 7, where we are stopping today. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were freed from the basket. You called in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah or Meribah. Okay, this is God saying, I removed your shoulder from the burden. If you can cast your burden on the Lord, he will remove your shoulder from the burden. He says, I freed his hands from the baskets. The baskets that were chained to you that were heavy, the heavy loads. God says, I freed your hands from the basket. That is what God does for me when I cast my burden upon the Lord. He frees my hand from the load. He says, Kemi, they are no longer your load. Leave them alone. He freed my hand from the basket. You called in trouble and I delivered you. Anytime I call in trouble, God always delivers me. You called in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. Whilst you did not know, I was working things out in the secret place to benefit you, Kemi. Because you've cast your burden upon me. And guess what? Life is made of burdens. We all have our problems. Problems of birth problems of location and relationships, problems that we cause ourselves and others cause us, we would always have problems. But by the grace of God, may we all learn to cast our problems upon the Lord. He has never failed me. That is my testimony. You try it as well. May God bless you. He will meet on another installment of cast your cares or cast your burdens upon the Lord. I am your host, 
Pastor Dr. Kemi Atondai Lori, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. God bless you. See you next time. Bye for now.